Hello again. Um, this video we're going to talk about Box2D joints. Now we've done a lot with Box2D already. We've made circles and rectangles and static and dynamic and polygon shapes and multiple shapes attached to a body, but we've, we've left out a key, uh, a key thing that's possible in Box2D. We, one of the things we can do in Box2D is connect two bodies together. This is what joints do in Box2D. And in this video, we're going to look at two case studies of joints in Box2D. We're going to look at a distance joint, and we're also going to look at a revolute joint. Now, I should mention there are lots of kinds of joints in Box2D. I could keep writing prismatic, rope, pulley, gear, uh, a couple more that I, ha that I can't remember right now off the top of my head. There are lots of kinds of joints in Box2D to create all sorts of kind of crazy, wacky physics scenarios. Um, so, uh, I, uh, but, but, but I think what's going to be most useful, hopefully, is to look at these two joints. What is the process for defining and creating a joint? How does a distance joint work? How does a revolute joint work? And then if you need some of these other joints, you may want to take a look at the Box2D manual as well as the JBox2D documentation, um, which will um, kind of lead you towards some of these other possibilities. And eventually, I, I only have examples for these two joints, but eventually I would like to make some for others as well. So send me your requests and I'll get cracking on that. Okay, so um, what, is a, what is a joint? So let's look at first at a distance joint. So a distance joint is essentially a spring that we're going to put between two uh, objects. Uh, you know, you, we can visualize it like this. We have two box 2D bodies, and here's a joint connecting them. These objects, this could be a springy joint, it could be a very rigid joint, it could, have, it could be long, it could be short. There are lots of ways you could configure this, but it is just that a connection. It's going to bind these two bodies together, and when we run a processing sketch, you're going to see that when, as this one falls, it's going to pull this one along with it. Now, one thing that we should really emphasize here with box 2D joints is they have no geometry. Meaning, if something else were falling, it would pass right through that. A joint is simply a force. This distance joint is simply a force that's going to connect these two. Now, in my example, I'll choose to draw a line there, but that shouldn't trick you to realize that the, you shouldn't think that there's geometry. One, I'm kind of going uh, ahead of myself here, but if you wanted to actually have geometry with this, one thing that you might think about doing is creating a, a body, a body, and a body, and then putting the joints here so that you can actually, right? So the, this would be a connection between these two, and this would be a connection between these two. But that's, so that'll be your exercise, actually. That's a great exercise. When you finish this video and you look at the distance joint um, examples, try to make this as your exercise and see how that works. Okay. <laughs> anyway, now, okay, so what is the process? Remember when we like, had to make a box 2D body? We had all these steps to find the body, set up the parameters, to find the shape, find the fixture, shape, all that. So we want to look at the same thing for joints. What is the process for creating a joint? We're going to walk ourselves through it, and then we're going to look at code examples that implement it. Kind of give us a cursory glance over it. We're not going to type out the entire example. Um, hopefully this will just give you an overview here. Okay, so what is the step? Now one thing, the first thing we need to do is have two bodies ready to go exclamation point. So you, if you're going to make a joint, the point of a joint is that it connects two box 2D bodies. So before you even create the joint, you should have variables that are referencing the two box 2D bodies that you want to connect. And we'll see that when we get to the code example. So once you have the two bodies ready to go, you need to define the joint. Now, what, what does it mean to define the joint? It means to create a joint definition object, but it also means to set the parameters. So set the parameters. So just as an example, what are the parameters for a distance joint? Let's list those. The parameters for a distance joint is a length. This is the rest length. Remember the rest length of a spring. If a spring comes naturally to rest, what will that distance be between the two bodies? Um, it also has a parameter called frequency hertz, and it has a damping ratio. So frequency hertz, you can think of as the kind of speed of oscillation, the harmonic, the simple harmonic motion, right? Is it a, what is the frequency of that oscillation? And typically these are numbers between one and five. Uh, damping ratio, you can think of as um, 
it kind of affects also the springiness, but like, uh, and you can think of damping as what causes a spring to kind of come to rest. And these are typically numbers between zero and one. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so by the way, if you wanted a completely rigid distance joint, you would make the frequency hertz value zero and the damping ratio one. So that would be complete damping and no oscillation whatsoever. Okay, so once we've defined the joint, <laughs> look at my notes here. Um, I guess I made that, well, let's make that a separate step. <laughs> so we have four steps here. Once we've defined the joint, the third step here would be to configure all the parameters. And they're going to be different. So with the distance joint, we were looking at length, frequency, damping ratio. For a revolute joint, when we get to that, we're going to see there's motor speed and torque. Each joint is going to have a different set of physics properties. And the Box2D manual is the best place to kind of look up what are those, what are, what are, the, what are the parameters, or what are the kind of ranges of values for them. So once we've configured all the parameters, then all we need to do is that last step, create the joint. Right? So two bodies ready to go. Define a joint object. Configure all of these parameters for a distance joint. We've just got three we're going to configure. And then create that joint. So let's actually look at an example of this in action now. <laughs> okay. okay, let's take a look at this example. So as I click the mouse, we can see these little springy particle flying circle things are connected. So what's going on here? Each time I click the mouse, we've made two Box2D bodies and one joint connecting them. And you can see the joint's a little bit springy. It's a distance joint. So obviously, we're implementing all these steps that are over here in the code. So let's find where we're going to implement those steps. Before we can get there, though, let, let me just point out something that's a little bit particular about this example. Look at this class here. This class is the particle class. This is essentially what we have in all of our other examples. We make this particle or box or thing object, and that thing object has as a, a reference into it, inside of itself, a box to the body that controls all of its physics. That's what we've always done. Now we need, where do we put the joint? So there's lots of different strategies here, and we could make a kind of our own joint. We could make a class called connection, and that has a joint in it, and, and, and that would be a, a useful thing to do. This particular example does something like that, um, and what it does is it has a pair class, and the pair class has two particle objects in it. The pair is an object that, that, that stores all the information related to two particles and the joint that connects them. So it's just the way that we're choosing to organize our code. And this is an interesting question that you might ask yourself. Uh, I have this scenario where I'm using joints in this way. What's a nice object-oriented way to organize my code? Ask those questions in the comments, in, in the Vimeo comments below. Um, maybe we can have a little discussion about some of those things. OK, so, um, but how's it working here? We have two particle objects. We create them like we create any old particle objects. And then we make the joint. So down here, we're now making the joint. We're following those steps. So I, I guess I didn't, um, in the comments here, come on. I could say step one is create the joint, right? So that's just, that's just creating that joint object. Step two, we said, is configure the properties. And one of the things we see here is that, remember, a joint, the whole point of a joint is that it connects two Box2D bodies. And this is what we're doing right here. We're saying body A of the joint is particle 1's body. Body B of the joint is particle 2's body. And then we're setting its length, its frequency, and its damping. Those are those properties right there. And you can see one thing that's really important to point out about length is remember, if we're thinking about the length in pixels, we've got to convert it before we give that value to box 2 d It's got to be in world scale, box 2 d world scale. And you can see we're choosing 3, we're choosing 0.1. Try different values. Here's a great exercise. Build little slider controls that allow you to like set what the values of those joints are before you create them. Um, and uh, okay, so and then uh, so this that's step two, and then I don't know somehow we had four steps. Oh, we had okay. This is really oh boy, I'm doing I'm really botching this. Step one <laughs> is have two bodies ready to go. Right, that was step one. Then we can create the joint and can between those two bodies maybe technically 
<laughs> that goes there, right? We can create the joint between those two bodies, configure its properties, whoops, and then the very last step is actually create the joint. And you can see there's some gobbledygook code here, but we're calling box2d.createJoint and passing in the joint definition. And there the joint is done. Interestingly enough, though, look at this. Distance joint DJ equals. This is a local variable, which means it's gone the moment after we create that joint. And I should just point out, in this example, that's OK. All we wanted to do in this example was create a joint that connects those two bodies. We don't need to affect that joint, delete it, change its properties later. However, if you did, we would probably we would see here as a variable, we would probably want to keep a reference to that joint variable. And you know, now that I think of it, this example might be a little more clear if I always did that, even though we're not making use of it in this example. Um, but well, I'll consider rewriting that you know, when I eventually fix all these videos and make them really good. <sighs> okay, so, and then you can see later, how are we, how are we visualizing the joint? We're just drawing a line. So um, that's why we don't, we, you know, we, we can just, we know that that joint always connects those two bodies. We can make a line between those two. Okay, so this is the distance joint, and we can just, to remind ourselves, run this example. We can see, there it is again, the joint's connecting those two bodies. There's lots of things you could think about this. Try to create a string of, of things connected. Try to make, a, you know, a mesh of stuff connected. Use the distance joint in a different way than just this simple example. That would be an exercise. Okay, let's look at a revolute joint in the next video. Hi, I'm tacking this on to the distance joint. Uh, I forgot there is also an example. There's an exercise in the book, exercise 5.6, which describes how you can make a bridge like kind of by connecting a lot of objects all connected with lots of little distance joints between them. And you can see here we have this kind of springy elastic bridge that I can create all these ob box objects that get kind of piled up and it's hanging and waiting there. So this is something you might think about doing. Obviously the answer is there in the GitHub repository, exercise 5.6, but this as an exercise you might try to create something like this. Um, and one of the key things to realize here is the two bodies at the end are static bodies. They're not dynamic. If they're static, that means they're fixed, and that's what's kind of holding this bridge in place. Okay, um, that's all I wanted to mention.